Let's chat morning basket. Okay guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Christina um, and today is the end of my series of the end of year reviews for everything that we've done in the 2023-2024 homeschool year. Today I'm sharing my morning time supplies and resources and all that we did in our morning basket. So these are things we do as a family, things we uh, read together, worked on together. Um, there are some things that were misses for me this year that I just didn't get to. And then there was a lot of wins. So I'll just kind of share with you guys all of that. And um, we'll go ahead and get into it. Now, I have already posted the reviews for my fourth graders curriculum and resources and the reviews for my first graders resources. So if those are videos you're interested in, um, go ahead and check those out. Uh, it was a good year, definitely, and, um, you know, I think I didn't get to everything I'd hoped <laughs> I would get to, um, but, I mean, so that is life, right? Uh, definitely Morning Basket is the more kind of uh, fluid thing in our homeschool, so um, it doesn't make or break our homeschool if, say, I don't get to something that I had hoped. I can always just, you know, move it to the upcoming year or save it for later. You know, maybe it'll be better at another time. So don't feel bad if there are things that you intended to do that you didn't get to. We've all been there, done that, and I definitely had, if you listen to any of my other videos, I uh, had those experiences this year. So, but it did, it was good. We read some good things. Um, so I'll share kind of some books that we read that we really enjoyed. We read Stuart Little, which was a favorite with us. And the kids really realized how different the book is to the movie because they've seen the movie a variety of times. There's illustrations in here. So that was a win. We enjoyed The Great Turkey Walk. This was kind of an adventure tale of going west and um, having a whole lot of turkeys with them. Uh, so this was definitely an enjoyable read. Kind of some humor in there. So we read that one. Uh, these two were resources from Generations. And I, I put them in the basket more towards my um, first grader, so, or my seven-year-old. Uh, so this is Hudson Taylor, and then we have Amy Carmichael. These are just really simple books. Um, this was a four-pack or five-pack, so I have some that most likely I'm just going to have my son read. But we did read these aloud in Morning Basket, and they were enjoyable and easy to understand, beautiful illustrations. Uh, we read Hero's Tale, or finished it early on in the year. Um, so this is Christian Heroes, uh, The Family Treasury of True Stories from the Lives of Christian Heroes, from Dave and Netta Jackson. Uh, so this we enjoyed. Um, there would be a story, well, a few stories, like it kind of took you into chapters of the stories, which kind of made it easy to read if you were just going to do chunks. Um, and then there would be like a scripture and some questions to talk about what we read. So that was enjoyable. I'm sure we'll revisit this book. This was a good one. We also read Freedom Train, the story of Harriet Tubman. This was a good one as well. Um, the kids followed along were very interested in her story so this was when this I actually forgot to put my fourth graders um, video but with my fourth grader we read the care and keeping of you the body book for girls uh, this wasn't like mind-blowing or anything most of this stuff I had already talked to her about um, because you know I mean, she's at that age, a lot of this we were going through, things come up, and I just feel it best to just have a conversation then and there, rather than waiting for the right time, or waiting till we can sit down and, you know, talk over a book, or what have you. So, um, yeah, a lot of these we talked about, but, you know, um, it's like 
taking care of yourself, taking care of your hair, your skin, um, of course puberty. Um, so I mean, it just kind of, I guess, reinforced the things that we have been talking about here and there. So it was fine. And this is the older one. I think this one's from the 90s. Um, but it was good. But nothing that I didn't agree with, I guess I should say. Um, some things, I guess you could word slightly different, which I did. Um, but we sat together and just went over it, talked about the topics, and had a conversation. So it worked out for what I needed it to, to do. <laughs> uh, we read Coming to America, The Story of Immigration by uh, Betsy Maestro. And this is a great immigration book. Sp explains things quite well. Uh, so we read that as a family. Understood Betsy, which was one of our uh, favorite books of the year. We really enjoyed this story. I had never read this one before. Again, this one has illustrations. Uh, just highly recommend it. If you haven't read this, it was a good one. We read The Last Safe House. This is a story of the Underground Railroad. Again, another great book. Lovely illustrations. There's activities you can do. Um, recipes in these books. This was just very good. Kind of gives you an inside view. Um, and the way the story is told, you get to understand it from different perspectives. So this we definitely enjoyed. Abraham Lincoln, one of the D'Alaire books. Loved this book, absolutely loved it. And the kids really enjoyed it. The illustrations were pretty captivating for them. So they were excited to open this book up whenever we got to it. Now there's a couple we didn't finish. So we have The Great Wheel by Robert Lawson. Now, now this is about The Great Wheel from the Chicago World's Fair. And um, we're from Chicago, so I thought that tie-in would be nice. We recently went to a zoo uh, that was kind of celebrating the 100 years um, anniversary and had a wheel there. That was probably, I don't know, a quarter of the size that this one would have been. So they had a little spiel about this particular one in there, which was, you know, a nice connection. So we were enjoying it for a bit, but and don't mind, I we have a puppy. <laughs> and she's a big puppy. <laughs> she's grown so fast since we got her. Um, and yeah, I caught her chewing this book up, so that's why it looks like that. Um... Yeah, the dog was eating our morning basket. Um, but anyways, uh, this book was really difficult for the kids to narrate. So how we do read aloud, you know, I read a portion, I have the kids narrate, just to make sure that they're understanding what we read, and this was really difficult for them. Um, now, there is a lot of, um, you know, talking about... Uh, industry, how thing, how the wheel was made, um, you know, so I could see in that respect it kind of being difficult for them because it kind of went on to like very specifics of uh, what they were going to be using to build it. So if you have like an engineer, future engineer, or future architect, I feel like this is a great book because the way they do explain it, um, and, you know, so there's a kid coming from Ireland um, to help build it. And it kind of follows him along and his family and the people that he encounters along the way. Uh, so that part of it is pretty interesting. I will probably actually finish reading it because I want to see what happens. Uh, but the kids really struggled uh, with narrating. So we actually just put it down because it was like they couldn't recall anything that was happening even after we talked about it. like So it wasn't obviously interesting to them enough to remember the details we had already talked about and then it wasn't interesting enough for them to remember little bits here and there that we were reading. So we tried it. 
I enjoyed it. I'll keep reading it to see what happens, but it was not a win for the kids. And then we've got a couple in here that we still have to work on. So we're still working on the one and only Ivan. Uh, this we will probably just finish up this summer. The kids absolutely love this. Now I did mention uh, that there are some kind of um, evolutionary ideas that are coming from the perspective of the gorilla. Uh, we don't believe that perspective, so I just kind of changed up the wording. Uh, it was easy enough to do. I didn't feel like it was all over the place to where I couldn't read the book, but uh, just wanted to put that out there for anybody interested in that. Uh, but it was a good. It is a good story. We're finishing it up. Um, yeah, the kids really enjoy this. Of course, there are some sad parts. It's sad to think of any animal in captivity and um, you know coming from its point of view and what they might be thinking. So that's kind of how this book is written um, but definitely enjoy it uh, on the banks of Plum Creek we are definitely a fan of the Little House series this is the number we're on I don't so um, let's see what are we on the yeah we're on like the fourth one if I'm going along this particular order um, and we've liked all of them this one is a little slower it's a slower pace um, it's, you know, it's not as easy to get through, but we plan on get through and probably, uh, read the rest of the one at only Ivan, and then in the summer just pick this up and finish it out. That's the plan, but yeah, this isn't the easiest one to get through, and not so far, not our favorite, but, um, we're still enjoying the series, so we will finish that. Uh, let's see, so... We finished the story of Jesus' people. Moving some of these extra things here. Uh, we finished this, which I mentioned in my first grade review because he was working on the activity book originally. Um, but we absolutely love this. This is from Generations. This is their history. This is the first level. Um, and it just kind of shares how the gospel was spread from people who um, were part of that. Um, and many of these people, like we re really hadn't heard their story yet. So that's uh, what was really nice about this. We like this enough that we're going on a level two. So that's what we'll be doing next year. This was something we just read once a week in Morning Basket and it worked out well. Now for health, um, these are loop subjects. So um, we finished this one. This is Life Before Birth, a Christian family book. Um, so we loop uh, health, handicraft, um, virtues, and financial literacy. And they, we only did this once a week, Fridays. So we would only get to each topic like once a month. So... Some of this stuff we didn't end up finishing <laughs> is my point. Uh, so this is uh, a resource that kind of shares the process uh, from fertilization, when the egg and the sperm come together, and the whole process through. Uh, talks about it from a Christian perspective. And even the doctor in here, he'll share like the kind of the atheistic or the worldly view of children in the womb and then of course the Christian side of things and what God says God's word against the world um, which I, I enjoyed that take on it uh, so yes we did talk about fertilization the egg and the sperm and just the process of the baby coming up so this uh, provided tons of questions for the kids. Um, they had a lot of questions. Um, so they they approach things like abortion in here. But we are in 2024 and this is a topic that um, is all over the place. Honestly, you're hearing about it in a lot of different avenues these days. 
Uh, so it kind of just takes these concepts and helps kids understand God's word and how he intended uh, things to be versus what they are. Uh, so we really enjoyed this story. I liked how it was laid out. Now it is kind of a conversational tone, so like it's like dad, what dad says, what mom says, um, you know, which not everybody I think enjoys that sort of layout, but it worked. I mean, it wasn't hard to keep the flow of what was being written, um, and we enjoyed it. Uh, so I had intended to do this one as well, Crafted by God. From Fertilization of Birth. Little books and things in here. You know. Uh, but we did not get to this one. So this will be coming with us. This upcoming year. Um, there's like all kinds of pullouts and stuff. So we'll be reading this one next year. Because we did not get to it. Um, financial Literacy. Money Matters for Kids. Earn it, give it, spend it, save it. Uh, fun, jokes, puzzles, and principles from the Bible. Really enjoying this. This again, we did not finish. Um, we just have a little bit left, but we're just going to take this into the upcoming year. And I really ha like how there's scripture to back up the topics. So, some of the ones we read about. being content. And usually there's like a little joke, they'll throw in trivia. Um, riddles, you know, like little puzzles and stuff, which is fun. Like we'll pause and we'll work on whatever it is. Uh, and then they end the chapter with a treasure hunt. They'll give you a memory verse and then a Bible passage to go over that talks about contentment. So they'll that's how this is set up. I really enjoy this. I know there's one for teens as well. Oh, this is the older version I think I had used. Uh, so, stewardship, trusting God, tithing and giving, being content, diligence and excellence, honesty, generosity, spending, saving, and investing, debt and credit, budgeting, planning. Uh, so those are the topics in here. So we're enjoying it. And we will continue this next year. Same with the Book of Virtues. Um, this is a William J. Bennett. So this just talks about different things. We have faith, loyalty, honesty, perseverance, courage, work, friendship, responsibility, and then I'll just give you various things like poems, um, stories, classic stories, excerpts from different things. We enjoy this. So we actually kind of fell off it a little. We were doing it and then we fell off. Like after the holidays, I feel like <laughs> kind of throws everything off. I don't know. It's like it's hard to get back in the groove after the holidays for us. Uh, so that was kind of the issue with this. But yeah, this is just a great resource. We will continue with this. I'm sure we'll be reading this for many years to come, honestly. And before I get to this, well, so uh, also um, Bible study. We were reading Old Story New. From This is all the New Testament. This is Marty Bukowski kind of devotional. It's a 10 minute devotional. Um, to draw your family to God. Absolutely love this. Now, this is a big book, so it has taken us, um, I don't know, a couple years, and we're still, we're still working on it. So we're almost done. This will come into the summer. And we'll just continue with it. It's like a five-day setup. There are little activities you could do to um, set up the week which is here, but we usually don't do that. We just do the daily, like I'll do the introduction and then we'll do the dailies. So one day we'll do day one, etc. Um, and I just like that. It really kind of gives an introduction, scripture to read, 
and then talks about it and then there's questions for the kids and then a prayer uh, that's that's it's a real simple layout um, but really um, goes into depth and connects uh, the Old Testament to the New Testament shows us where Jesus is in the entire Bible um, and makes those connections for the kids um, talking about the prophets and the Psalms and um, giving us places to find that in the Bible. This has been a wonderful resource. I really enjoy it. There is one for the Old Testament as well which we're going to take a break next year do something different. We'll probably come back to this down the road so I recommend that uh, we were reading developing a heart for God this is another one I think yeah we still have some left so this has been a beautiful uh, resource as well just photography in here is nice um, it's just kind of landscape and things like that uh, but the actual devotions are quite beautiful. So this is going through Psalm 119 um, and just taking us along. Uh, but there's just really nice um, connections being made in these devotions which I really like. Uh, so the kids have enjoyed this. So we just do something from here then we read from here. We're also reading uh, God is really, really real. 30 easily taught Bible doctrines. We did finish this. Um, and this is, again, a great resource. Uh, there is information in the back to go a little deeper on each lesson. So here you have um, lesson 13 about people groups and languages. God created different people groups and languages. And here they're referencing Genesis 11:19. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. And then it goes into a little understanding of that. Some questions you can ask them, and then you can take it back here, go to lesson 13, and then just go a little deeper, showing you where you can find all that information in the Word. So I would always read this to the kids as well. Um, but definitely enjoyed it. Again, there are 30 here. Um, it starts with the story, kind of overall, overarching story of the Bible in picture form here. I can show you. And so that's how it starts, and then it goes into the doctrines. Uh, absolutely great resource for young kids. We enjoyed doing this, and we would just do uh, once a week. So we ended up getting through that, doing it that way. So this was once a week. These two were daily. We're also reading, um, She Prayed, 12 Stories of Extraordinary Women of Faith Who Changed the World. This we started late, probably within the last couple months. Um, so this just talks about various women. Uh, so we're just kind of reading one a week. I think we're doing this one on Fridays. So this one we're just going to finish at our pace. I don't know if let's throw it in the basket. We'll probably read it through the summer as well. We'll see. I don't know. This might just go into the basket uh, first term next year. And we're also reading Wonders of Creation. Uh, design in a fall, fallen world. So this was great too. This is kind of just science. Um, so we'd read every other day we'd read from here. Uh, I mean this is this is really intended for probably I don't know um, middle school and up but my kids got a lot from it. So this was kind of geared to, toward my 10 year old, um, but my son loves science so much he was always paying attention when we were reading this. Now some of the language in here obviously is a little older, uh, so we didn't always read 
the entire passage. I'd maybe, you know, kind of pick and pull from it a little bit. But we did enjoy this. Tons of information the kids got. And of course, it's from uh, Young Earth's creation perspective. So, it would always make, you know, give those examples, which I think is always great. Um, and then we left off on mathematics and music um, so we didn't really get through the math portion of it but I will be using this next year for our human body um, study so we have like, information on the brain the nervous system heart and lungs so that's why I decided to stop because I was like you know we're gonna uh, go deeper next year on these topics, so we'll just bring this in when we do that. Muscles and skeleton, the skin, the eye, a lot of information here. Uh, so this will be a resource for us for that. It does go into rock layers. There's so much. I mean, whatever topic you're going, you know, in for science, this is a great resource. You could always just pull this out, or if your child's doing a paper or something like that, this is just one of those uh, reference books that I think is great to have on the shelf. So we enjoyed reading through that. Uh, our poetry was uh, Sing a Song Popcorn, Every Child's Book of Poems. So this is just a great poetry book. And we got through a good portion of it. We're here. Um, so we would just read a poem in the morning and talk about it. We did fall off it a little bit. So, I mean, we weren't doing it every single day. Uh, but we would pick this up. And, um, yeah, it was good. You know, we love always incorporating some sort of poetry in our morning basket. Uh, also, the daily reads was the America's American Patriots Almanac. This is another William J. Bennett and John T. E. Gribb or Crib. Um, so this is more of a daily read. It gives you the date. Here's July 11th, the Burr Hamilton duel, and then it tells you about that particular. Um, thing that happened in history and then down here it'll give various dates on that same day of July 11th of things that happened so this is just a nice resource again after the holidays we were kind of sporadic with it and then eventually I just wasn't picking it up but because we're still working on American history with my daughter next year I will keep it in the basket and we'll pull it out here and there um, great stories. It was a good one. I like this book. Okay, and then some things, or something we really didn't follow through with, was music. So, um, this is music from underthehome.org. Again, I mention it a lot on this channel. It is a free resource. I absolutely love it. been using it for years. Um, and this was, oops, I'm still. This was the music, so we got to, which lesson? Lesson five, so obviously not very far. We would split these up though, so we wouldn't do an entire lesson in like a day. Uh, music, uh, again, was a Friday thing. Well, actually, no, it wasn't. We did, we had it on the schedule for two days a week, I think Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and again, just fell off of keeping that consistent in the schedule. There is art, uh, art study that goes with it that um, contains the instrument within it that you're studying. So this was strings. Um, so we talked about the violin, the cello. Uh, I like how it's set up though because it really does... Um, promote the memory of it because you're kind of consistently going over the the parts of the instrument you're talking about it over and over so 
so the kids actually were getting it like they were remembering the parts of the instrument and the names and all of this so um see so yeah, i just kind of separate into what days oh this looks like we were doing it mondays and yeah i remember <laughs> but um here's kind of directions there'll be a synopsis of what you're going to be learning vocabulary to learn uh and then different categories and how you're going to kind of go over the lesson so it was good i like it but again we just fell off it so um i don't know i don't this this was a second grade music uh we do have plans to kind of outsource music um, with an online program next year mostly because it was my daughter's request she wants to do singing so there's like a whole leveled course that we're going to try um but for free music we enjoy this there is obviously links to audible components that you would listen to so you can hear what the violin sounds like you know what the uh instruments so you can relate those if you hear them um so i do recommend that for a free resource i think it's great uh we just weren't very good at keeping it up now our handicraft was tying knots uh so this was a tying kit had little uh cards so there's like little cards with different knots both sides uh so this was good we did this um this was one of our loop subjects so this would be in like once a month like once so i mean it wasn't as often as probably we could have done but we did it and we we kept it in the schedule uh so this now will just be an activity that i leave out that they can continue practice practicing they had a lot of fun tying these you know, the ropes here i think i got these just from the dollar tree they were in the crafting section there's a long rope that I think I just cut so that's what they were using there's also little ones that came in the kit so um, yeah I have all good things to say about knot tying we enjoyed it they learned some knots there's a couple in here we didn't get to and a couple in here I think they still need to practice uh, so we're just gonna leave it out and they can continue doing that uh, it was a good it was a good thing that we did the penny crafts I like to tend or I tend to want to just stick to one thing throughout the year so we can kind of really get good at it so you know they, they got a couple of those down and then they can just keep practicing that was what we did for handicraft now over here <clears throat> is our ancestry unit so we have been, uh, you know, studying the countries of which our ancestors came from. And this is including my husband and myself. Uh, so the beginning of the year, we finished Nigeria. Uh, and then we did Mexico. We did Scotland. And these three we still have to do. So we got through, I don't know, two and a half since this was already halfway finished. Um, and we enjoy them. We're just using the thistle and biscuit small um, country unit studies and then just kind of diving deeper into anything that's kind of interesting. Uh, so we've enjoyed this. Uh, this was really good. We've been getting books from the library. Unfortunately, uh, the Scotland book list was very hard for me to find books at my, at my, uh, library they had quite a few of the mexico related books and nigeria scotland was difficult which is hard so we've been re referencing uh, youtube for a lot of the read aloud with this particular unit uh, we were just finding videos on youtube and don't forget how wonderful youtube is for this so if you have like book lists or unit studies that you're doing and you can't find the books unfortunately I have a great library but they're just starting to carry books that I don't care to check out and getting rid of the good books <laughs> I don't know if anybody else is having this issue with their libraries but 
it's getting harder and harder to get books that I want to get at my library. So uh, YouTube is a great resource for finding those read-alouds and um, yeah, so I've been doing that and just making uh, playlists of things uh, for us to watch. So that has worked out well. But we really do enjoy the country units from Thistle and Biscuits. They're inexpensive and just a really easy spine to help take you through whatever country it is you're looking at to learn more about. My daughter's actually doing one in the summer, which hopefully I can get a video to share. I created a unit and uh, my daughter's doing um, a unit from here. So we'll talk about that in that video. But we're going to carry on with this. I don't know. I'm hoping we can get through these next three uh, in this upcoming year. I mean, they're simple enough for me to kind of fit into the schedule, but I'm not going to schedule it in just yet, and we'll see how the year takes us, you know, kind of uh, do the kind of slow start and see where we're at. So definitely we'll continue with the Ancestry unit. I've learned so, so much. And yeah, this has just been a fun way for us to do geography um, because we want to understand the people that came before us. Um, and yeah, it was it was good. So um, I think that's it, guys. Uh, as far as art, oh wait, yes, let's see. Art art was also a fail. <laughs> I bought this to do art. Now I'm not gonna say it's a fail. My son draws a ton. You can kind of see. I can zoom in here. These are his drawings. And that's what he's doing all the time. And this is all freehand. So I just kind of let him uh, draw. We use the art hub for kids or is the art for kids hub here on youtube the kids love that um they're currently working on origami um and we did a lot of uh seasonal activities so like seasonal art that we were doing for um the upcoming whatever holiday or you know christmas uh in the spring so this is a fantastic art book we're probably going to use it again i did of course grab the art from master books to do next year um and then i have like do you know what i've been doing i've been planning all the way to high school so <laughs> i've been plugging in different resources and things that i want to do with the kids from now until high school. So I pretty much plan most of it. And I wanted to do that because then I can like tweak things as I go or as I hear of like new programs. But for a while I do want to just kind of zero in on specific things. So once we do this full art program with Masterbooks um, this upcoming year, I'll just keep this on the shelf as a resource and we can pull it here and there if we want to you know, work on some art. But we really didn't need it. Uh, we did tons of crafting and drawing and different things uh, this past year or this current year. Uh, so I'm not feeling like we lacked any. Um, but I like the idea of doing more zeroed in art, like just drawing for a year or just painting for a year. So those are some ideas I have for the upcoming years after we get done with the full program with master books but yeah this was not a win not because it's not an awesome book but because i just never picked it up <laughs> but at least i have an additional art resource on the shelf i like to have those around kids get bored these are always great just to pull out and have them work on something so i know that this was kind of uh you know a lot but this was a lot of looping um, and a lot of planning all of my read alouds I had planned previously in the year I knew what I was gonna read when I was gonna read them we are do doing read alouds a little different in this upcoming year I'm not gonna have so many going at the same time um, we're just gonna 
and focus on a book at a time and I think that'll be helpful or maybe a couple books at a time we'll see um, but we did enjoy what we got through um, and what we didn't get through we'll continue working on other than the great wheel which I explained but it was a great it was a great year we had a lot of family conversations we talked about a lot of really good things um, as a family and we enjoyed time together which is my main part of this whole morning time morning basket it's really like the time I enjoy most of our homeschool and sitting together and having these conversations and listening to beautiful stories and doing fun activities is just a win I love this so much so some of these things will come with us in the upcoming year uh, and uh, yeah we will go ahead and leave it here guys I appreciate you hanging out with me if you have any questions or you know want to know more about anything that I shared here just drop those down in the comments and let me know how your family subjects went this year what was your favorite subject drop that down in the comments um, I'd love to know and uh, maybe even a favorite read aloud what was your favorite book that you read this year uh, drop that down below and um, thank you so much I will be filming a kind of what we do in the summer video just to share some of the resources we'll be using coming up here soon so if you want to see that make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss when that posts and subscribe to stick around and I will see you on the next one God bless, guys.